Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian at our beautiful Rasmussen Theater. My name is Hayes Lavis, and I'm fortunate enough to work here. And we are celebrating this weekend our Living Earth Festival. It's the eighth year of the festival, and each year they have focused on celebrating a different food. This year's food that we were celebrating is cacao or chocolates. Um, so if I could take a quick moment and have everyone, if you've got your cell phones, please either set them to vibrate or off. And also, the mirror is a little bit limited. You might want to make sure that you're sitting in a way you can actually see what's happening in the mirror. That's your best view for the food. Um, and anyway, we're very fortunate to have today with us Chef Julio Saki and his wife, Heliodora. They will be demonstrating uh, areas, uh, recipes sorry, from Belize. And we're very fortunate to have with them as well our moderator, Sue McWilliams. Let's give a warm welcome to Julio. And a warm welcome for Sue McWilliams. Good afternoon again. Uh, I, you've just heard what a wonderful uh, couple of guests we have here and an opportunity to hear about indigenous food of the Maya. And this is a a sustaining drink or flour, basically, that can be made into many things. Uh, but today they're going to make pinole. So be sure on your way out to get a recipe card. And um, welcome. Tell us what you're going to do, Julio. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, welcome to this part of our show. And we're going to show you this afternoon you show you all how to make pinole from chocolate. Pinole is similar to that of the atoll that you would get um, just about anywhere. But in this case, we're going to show you pinole, which is traditionally Mayan. We are Mopan Mayans. We are from Belize. I am Mayan. And home, we do traditional cooking. We hardly ever go to restaurants and get cooked food. So eating at the restaurants here for us is exciting. So today, we're going to make um, chocolate pinole. And first of all, we're going to start by telling you that this uh, pinole is literally what the Mayan women give their husbands when they go out into the jungle, the forage food, the forage and green, like fresh fruits, fresh um, meat, fishing, so they don't have to be coming back and forth because there's no refrigeration, there's no processing, everything is so fresh, so they have to find a way and a method to get it out to them without them suffering while they're looking for food for the family. So here we go. Firstly, you need to get yourself some corn flour. And uh, in this case, you can get corn, and just about any corn, and you can take it and you can roast it, or you can go to the store and buy already a grounded corn flour. So we have the ground, ground flour. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the corn flour that is then, I mean, sorry, not corn, the, the, the corn, it is toasted. It's taken over the fire and cooked for you. So it's roast, like how you'd be roasting um, peanuts or things like that, but it's roasted nicely. So I'm going to ask my wife, Elidora, to show you how it is done. So we have already corn that is roasted, and we're going to put it on a grinding stone. And on, while she's, she's going to show you how it is done, and during that same process, we take um, cacao nibs. So the basic ingredient in this is corn and cacao nibs. Cacao is uh, basically, again, a Mayan uh, food. And it, we take cacao nibs and we can put proportions of it into the, um, into the actual corn itself. And that is what is grounded. This is going to take about 35 minutes to get it to the level where we want. So what I did, I went ahead and prepared some because I want to make sure that we have something for you to, to, to practice at home. So while she's grinding, um, I'm going to quickly start to do some mixes here, and she can go ahead and, and, and grind. So, so what she's using is a traditional grinding stone. It's 
from the Mayan people, and uh, women are the only ones who does the grinding. Men usually don't. It is actually unacceptable to see men grinding or working in the kitchen. They should not be in the kitchen. Uh, in the Mayan culture, men are traditionally out in the jungle. You have no reason to be in the kitchen, so you should be in the jungle working or in the farm doing something constructive. So, I would like to comment that Heliodora's position in the kitchen is well respected. <laughs> she holds many secrets. Uh, Julio, can you talk a little bit about your farm and your business in Belize? I understand that both the corn and the cacao that you're using today come from there. Okay, so um, we have a lot going back home. Um, typically, I would be doing this at home, but except back into the chocolate factory, mixing, blending, flavoring, turning cacao beans into chocolate. So that's what I would be doing home. But here, um, I'm going to show you how to fix this beautiful atoll. So what I'm going to do now is I need to pat. And we're going to take the pot, we're going to put it on the stove, turn your cooker on, and you probably will need about three cups of water, probably. And it depends on how much you're mixing, but we're going to do about a serving for, let's say, three or five servings. Depends on how big your serving should be. So we're going to, um, we're going to um, go ahead and And, and, and cook it up, and we're going to add water. So we want to show you. So um, on the farm, we grow our own cacao. We grow our own cacao where we make our chocolate. We do not buy the chocolate in the stores because we do have them at home just sitting and waiting and ready to be used. We do the complete farming. When we say complete farming, I'm talking about planting the, the actual trees, going out early in the morning, pruning them, making sure that they, we have enough sun for them, making sure that we have enough shade because it's a tree that loves um, sunlight and shade. If we give it too much sun, it has a plastic covering on the leaf and then the sun burns it and when it burns out, then it dies away. And we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that the, the, the trees are doing well, so we have to go make sure we give them enough shade. Once it starts to give us pond, we will call it the pond, take it out, and then we ferment it. We pre-ferment it. We don't give it complete fermenting for this kind of, of process that we're doing. So, and it's, it's fermented for about uh, four days instead of six days, and then we take it out, wash it, and then dry it out. And when it's drying out, the, the, the flavor is developed, then eventually we go and we do the roasting which is then what turns us into nibs, where the nibs are, are, are available. Um, you know, you can buy these in the stores, but these are then the, the heart of the actual, um, of the actual, um, of the actual uh, cacao beans. And your cacao beans is literally, you know, from the pods itself. Um, chocolate back home is high-valued um, product. It's respected among the Mayan people, and it is looked at as a very special um, bean. So we don't just abuse it, we use it with, with respect. And uh, So as the water is heating up, I can see it starting to boil. So now we're going to add the pinole inside, and it's, we're going to go slow with it. And as it is going, 
We're mixing, mixing slowly. So once it's in there, we're going to allow it to heat up some more and then it comes to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, then you are getting ready to go there. But for the meantime, we want to add some sugar. Okay, we want to add some sugar. So we have sugar here. We only use brown sugar. We don't use white sugar because white sugar is too um, refined and it does not have flavor. It's pretty much flat. And, and what we're looking for here is we're looking for flavor. So we, we don't want to um, we don't want to use the white sugar because I, I for some reason I just love um, brown sugar. I, it gives me added flavor. So let's add um, about about a cup of sugar. Now I have done this before, so I will not use measurements. I'm just going to use my eyeball skills. So. It's a sign of a good intuitive chef. There we go. So that's sugar added, and uh, we are going to continue turning until it turns. Now we're going to add um, our ingredients. So we're going to add a pinch, just about a pinch, or a, a little spoon of allspice, nothing massive was in there because you just want to flavor it. And then you are going to add black pepper. Black pepper gives it the, the real um, uh, little twist toward the spicy side of it. Um, we don't want too much because um, you don't want to not be able to enjoy it. You, see? you just want just the perfect size. So, wait. So we're going to add also um, not very much cloves. You need cloves. So we're going to add the cloves as is. Um, I just like when it is whole cloves because it, it has that special juice inside while it's cooking, coming out. I don't like to grind it because it, it, it does not give me what I'm looking for. So we're adding it in there already. And we're going to continue turning and cooking until it gets really um, thick. Uh, Julio, does it need to be stirred so that it doesn't get lumpy? Um, the reason why we have to stir it, yes, because you don't want it to form balls. It can form balls in there, and then it's, when you put it in your mouth, it gets stuck because the whole ball. No, just kidding. But it will be um, too lumpy. It's not enjoy. It's not cooking properly. So you have to keep going and, and stirring, and stirring, and stirring until it evenly cooks. It it's going to get thick. It's like. Um, it's, it's like cereal, it's like at the oats in the morning, it's going to get thick. But it takes a little while, so we, we, keep, we keep spinning, we keep spinning until it is cooked. And this you can do, it is very, really, really easy. Uh, you can follow your, um, your, your, your ingredients, and you can do this at home. It is something that you can replace instead of having um, maybe uh, loops, uh, sweet loops in the morning, you can have um, pinoli in the morning, and it is so healthy for you. It has the, 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 the cacao beans itself has a lot of vitamins and minerals that is in there. And the corn we have used is totally organic. It is non-GMO, so it is the perfect meal for you in the morning. So that's kind of like what we're going to be doing. Can I ask you, uh, back in more ancient history, how would a Maya man be able to carry his pinoli with him to go hunting or fishing? It's a, what it's a would the question. vessel be? It's, it's a very good question because then these Mayas, they never um, have um, pots. They never had these metallic pots. No to-go cups. Everything else <laughs> is made from clay. So we have to make four small ceramics. But the small ceramics are not big and they have little handles on them. So they would put them inside their shoulder bags and then they would go. So the, the wife would prepare, just like how we have it already pre-ground, it has its own sugar added, it has its own ingredients added, and all you really need to do is just take whatever amount they need, they put it inside their pot, make a fire, and fix it. So they can have a very good meal. Instead of having tortillas with them, they will have their pinole. And this is how it has been done in the very, very, very 
a long time ago. And today, I don't want this knowledge to die, so I keep doing it at the museum because we do run also a small museum in my center where we do traditional cooking for, for people like yourselves who want to see, for people who want to go in and practice how to do traditional mind cooking. We do that back home in Belize, and the idea is to keep the culture going because if we don't do it and practice it and teach it and always hide it away, whenever we pass away, everything is gone. So we want that knowledge to be passed on and we keep teaching other people to do it. So if any of you want to go and try this in Belize, please come visit us. We'll be happy to show you what we have. So you're welcome too. Oh good, I'll be there. <laughs> um, I'd also like to ask you a little bit about historically, I know cacao was thought to be sacred uh, cacao beans were exchanged as payment, so the beans were considered money. Um, but in ceremonial uses, is it ser how was it served, or was it just worshipped? Um, in ceremonial ceremonies, um, the cacao that is used for ceremonies is not served. That is taken and basically offered as a gift and then it usually is only used by the, by, by the people that are doing the, the, the ceremony. The ones that are served, the participants that are visiting, is prepared only by elderly women within the community. So a young oh. lady could not just come in and just whisk it away. Oh. It, it, it has to be um, specially uh, prepared where um, the, the elderly persons will be selected by the leader of the community, and then they go and then they make a whole two-day or a three-day ceremony on praying over the, whatever they're going to use, and take a portion of that as a special gift that is offered then that is not consumed. So whatever is prepared for the um, audience, there's another portion of that that is left that is served at a concentrated level to the, 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 the priests or the leader that is doing the performance and the balance and is mixed and spread out to the audience that are, that are participating. So there's a special way or a special rule on how it is done. You just can't go and just do it as, okay, I wake up one morning and I do it. It's mm -hmm. not how it works. There's a, there's a process, there's a way of doing it. And that's why I said earlier in the very beginning that we have to be able to give it the respect that the cacao needs because they, we believe that there is the goddess of cacao Mm -hmm. And we believe that he's looking on us, and if we mistreat the cacao, we're going to eventually lose it. So we have to give it the love it needs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> and if you were to take the mix of corn flour and cacao uh, and use that, I know you have a package of it there for sale. How else would you use that? Do you, I mean, could you bake with it? Okay, the, the, the corn flour is, um, has many, many, many uses. This is just one of the many uses. You can take this corn flour and just do away with the cacao. You don't have to add the cacao, and then you mix and make a drink from it that is, um, that is not without the, the chocolate inside, and it has a different flavor. It is still a pinole, but it is just not um, chocolate. flavored with chocolate. But when you add chocolate, you have more flavor and it just gives you that burst of, of energy when you're finished drinking it. Now, you can take the flour and you can mix it and you can make some very thick, thick um, tortillas with it. It's like a tortilla, but it's more like a muffin-like thick. And you can add salt to it, you can add your, 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 your spices to it to give it that more of a, a food taste rather than a drink taste. You can make muffins with it. You can make cake with it, or you can just take it and re-toast over as it is almost burnt, like black, really black, and dump it into hot water. You will then have a coffee made from the pinot. It's a coffee like it's made from the pinot rather than just doing it as a pinot. So the corn has very many, many uses in mm -hmm. it. So I'm not sure if any of you want to do it, but we can send you the corn flour, and please Feel free. We're on Facebook. Look for me on Facebook, and then you message me, and I'll be happy to, to send it to you, whatever you want. You know, we can send you all the names you want. In fact, we have uh, 
we have 23,000 tons of beans, metric tons of beans lying down ready to be sold. So if you want that, I'll send it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so. Okay, so the drink, I'm um, sorry, the, 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 this is a dessert. Uh, um, you can make the, the pinole as a, as, a, as, as a drink or you can make it as a dessert. So what we're doing here is we're going to make it as a dessert and it's going to be a little runny when it's, it's hot. Was that it, it cools down, it becomes hard like a pudding. You know what puddings are? They kind of have a texture. It's kind of like that when it cools down and that's then when you, when, 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 when you can have it. When it is very hot, it's very runny. So at, at the moment, it's coming up nicely. You can see, you can see the inside, it's really starting to, 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 to boil. So that, that's pretty good, that's a good sign. Is any of you hungry yet? <laughs> so it's coming along nicely. Good. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I guess I'll recall one of the facts I came up with when I was re researching the history of cacao. Uh, the Spaniards, once they discovered or came to Mesoamerica, one of their comments when they went back was they said, by drinking it, it makes you stay up all day. And um, so would you speak to that? What is the energy you get from there's a There's a high um, level of, um, of, of, of antidepressant that is inside the actual cacao itself. In coffee, tea, uh, caffeine is high, so it it gives you that force to need. But in the chocolate itself, it's packed with antidepressants and it does have caffeine. So when you mix those, not a high level of caffeine, uh, not, not, not high, but it does have it. But what is more packed with is the actual um, antidepressant. And when you consume that, when a little more thicker, stronger, that just gives you a natural high, comes like a natural high. You're, you're, you're very energetic, you're awakened, and that antidepressant keeps you quite cheerful. It makes you really, really outgoing for all day long. So I don't see why you shouldn't be consuming chocolate, especially if you're working with people that are going to stress you out. You need chocolate. Good chocolate. All right? So yeah, that, that's what it has. Well, and let's talk a little bit about what good chocolate is. Uh, we spoke yesterday during our chocolate chat about a kind of disappointing fact that uh, American candies or chocolates, by law, uh, need yeah. to have at least 7% chocolate in the chocolate bar. So I have no idea what else is in some of those chocolate bars. But uh, the average American candy bar has 10% chocolate. So you're tasting a lot of other additives. So if your palate has never tasted uh, really good organic chocolate ground, you know, like Julio has, um, the flavor of bitter comes into the discussion. But it's also, bitter can also be a flavor that if you are eating just because you're hungry, that's chocolate's not for you. If you're eating to feel some joy and meditate a little bit on flavor. That's what this kind of chocolate does. It's very complicated in its um, flavor and can last a long time. So that's when you see the, the chocolate bars that, that um, are sold in different percentages. And you'll see a bitter chocolate available at what, 80% cacao? They have 80, they have 90. It's, it's different levels. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, milk chocolate was never known in Mesoamerica uh, because they didn't have cattle. So uh, milk was added not until the 1700s in Switzerland when they figured out how to dehydrate milk. Um, so that's when milk chocolate came about. Um, but, you know, good straight chocolate is a treat. It's a very different flavor, complex. And um, I know your chocolates, you are a master chocolatier, which I think is phenomenal. I haven't met very many in my life. And, um, 
you know, your reviews of your flavors are people really bow down and and so you t talk a little bit about your flavors that you instill in your chocolates. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we uh, do not go, like I said earlier, to the store and buy our flavors or our ingredients. We don't do that. We make it from scratch. For example, um, when we make our chocolate back home, I don't go to the store and buy white sugar. We make our own sugar from the sugar cane that is brought indoors. But we press our own sugar cane, burn it, boil it, and turn it into molasses. Then, once it's finished, then it's used into crystals, and that's what we use in the chocolate, because in chocolate you can't add water, because it's oil-based. And um, once that is done, we always add natural flavorings. We use real ginger, ginger roots, we use real uh, uh, orange, get that orange flavor. We use real mint leaf, real mint leaf. We have to go get this mint leaf and we fix them up, press them out, get the oil from the mint leaf that we put inside our chocolate so that the chocolate has that authentic mint flavor. We also have um, other flavors, like we can add um, cardamoms in there, but we stick to flavors that we have around us. And when you mix um, chocolate with ginger, it gives you added energy because you know ginger is also very good for you, it has health benefits. So we look for those kinds of, of things to add in our chocolate. So like I said earlier, the, the chocolate we, uh, we use back home is also used as medicine. So you have to look for other things that you can add that is really good for you. Flavor for us, or for me, especially as a chocolate maker, is very essential. It is very crucial because I love taste, I love flavor, and if, it does, if my chocolate does not have it, or if the food that I cook does not have it, it's just simply not good. But my best flavor is when I take chili and put it into my chocolate. Now that I make for me. And my wife last time stole a little bit from me, and I was like, where did it go? <laughs> but it's really good. And then from then we found out, oh, maybe you know, I should make more of it because the guests that we had coming visiting us that are special people, we let them try it and they really, really like it. And then we started offering to them. Today it is one of our number seven. Chili dark chocolate, 80%. It's phenomenal. You cannot go wrong when you get it. So if you ever travel to Belize, please look for us. We'll be happy to show you how to make your chocolate. Because that's also what we do. We want to show you how to make traditional chocolate using the grinding stone. So, our pinoli is cooked. Let me show how it is done. Okay. There you go. It's, like I said, it needs to to cool off to become a little more sturdy, but it's it's it's, it's going to be running when it is um, when it is hot. There goes the second servings. So we speak open Mayan, and that's what I've been speaking to her uh, secretly without you are hearing. No, just kidding. When we speak open Mayan, and that's what we do. So now. We're going to add a little bit of um, a little bit of, 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 of look to it, and here goes your pinole. So thank you all very much for giving me the opportunity. We have time here so for much. questions. If so anyone have, has any. There's one here. There's a microphone oh, in the back if you want to ask any questions. Yes, go ahead. Is there a uh, popular chocolate brand that's sold that I might be able to find here that you would uh, endorse as having an, an authentic? I, um, I believe, I, I don't know the brands back here, but um, what you really want to look for is the percentage of chocolate that is in the, in, in the, the candy you're buying. What you want is you want to make sure that it has more chocolate than additives because they do add a lot of additives 
um, stuff like soybean nectosine, fruit pectin, and Can other flavoring that goes in, that may not give you the, um, the, 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 the taste you're looking for, simply because these additives do tend to react with heat, and it may not work as well. But the less additives you have, like 80%, 90%, that'd be perfect. Or if you can just go ahead and get nibs, that works even better. Thank you. Also, if you look on the label, you'll see uh, a fair trade stamp. And very often that, I mean, pay attention to that because that means that smaller cooperatives are supported. The way the farm operates is, doesn't include child labor, for example. Uh, gives back to the community, helps with the schools. Fair trade is very important in a lot of uh, native and, or well, you know, people's foods from way back, whether it be coffee farms, cow farms, you know, the, the farmers are, are mistreated and um, unfortunately it's the, the smaller farm we want to support so that that also helps their culture uh, be maintained. Um, so look for the fair trademark. Well, that's what I would so yeah, thank you all for coming. But yeah, if you um, if you look for good fair trademark, um, it encourages small farmers to, to continue their culture. For us here, we look at culture as food. If you don't have a culture, then you don't have a farming system. And if you don't have a farming system, then you begin to lose your identity. And if you lose your identity, then you will fall for anything because you don't really know what you're going to be standing for. But the Mayan people, us of Belize, we still have that dynamic culture that teaches traditional farming, that is environmentally friendly, that is encouraging reforestation, and this is the kind of farming system that we intend to continue to teach to our younger ones. So for me it is a pleasure and it's an honor to be here to show you what we do back home. Thank you very much. Another question? Can we taste it? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. We can't give out samples. Sorry. No. Any other questions? All right. Let's give Julio and Iglesias Saki a, a round of applause. Thank you for demonstrating. And also Thank you. to our wonderful you moderator, Sue McWilliams. We have a next program will be at 3.30. We have Chef Neff joining us then.